Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another Thursday night Scrap Your Scraps or Scrap Your Scraps Thursday night, whichever way you want to say it. Um, tonight is going to be talking about scraps and I'm specifically talking about my mixed media cleanup scraps. Um, <clears throat> as you know, I am a bit of a, a hoarder and uh, I do not like to throw away my ink. So any extra ink I have left over for any of the projects, they always get wiped up in, in a napkin of, or a paper towel of some sort or on another project that happens to be handy. Um, and I, I use those in my junk journals and some of my other work. So um, I thought today what I would do is kind of explain to you what the process is so you can understand my thinking on this and then what I do with them in the end. So on this side, I have a whole pile of not quite finished um, paper towels. So there's everything from hardly anything on it to a little bit on it to a lot on it, but only one color um, to, you know, smatterings of colors. So, um, and texture, actually, I also mop up media with it too. So some of them are a little crunchy. So you can see that these are all sort of still have place for color. Um, I try to stay away from uh, monochromatic as much as I can. Uh, I, I might do something that has um, adjacent color, but uh, oh, look at that. Isn't that yummy? Crunchy, sparkly stuff. Sorry. Um, but I, I also like there to be a pop. So if it's not popping to me then it ends up in the pile where it either needs to have something added to it or I need to continue to work it so um, you know that's what this pile is all about it's not the quite done yet pile and this pile I keep uh, close at hand for when I'm actually working on things and mopping stuff up so that's what that kind of pile is like and then I have piles like this where it's kind of an all over color, but there's nothing really popping out at me. Um, uh, this is like very pink. I need to, I need to feel like I need something in there to go boosh. This I like, but I have too much white. And uh, so I want to uh, fill in the white just a little bit because when you put that in a white junk journal, it doesn't look that great. Um, the nice thing about paper towel is what's happening here is that you get two for ones. Um, so that's very cool too. So, and then this is an all over purple with some mixed media uh, sparkly stuff on it, which is very cool, but it needs a shot of something. And I, I'm just not sure. This is not bad as a background. Um, I've got it here because I'm not really quite sold on it yet. But then again, you know, too much white on that one way too much yellow on this one so these are ones that i might actually go in and physically finish up um, so i just pulled them aside the other thing i have is all these papers i use for my spraying and my painting and um, they are not garbage either so i just keep reusing them until they get to the point i did have one i'll show you one uh, well this is getting there but I actually fold it and turn it and twist it in all different directions so that it ends up looking like some kind of a background. So eventually my papers that I've done my spray, um, you know, I just use them to keep my spray on my table, will turn out like this. Um, and that becomes a piece that I can use in my work. Um, either in a layout behind photos as a background in my um, junk journals or art journals or you know pieces of it cut up randomly and put in a in a collage so they get used up but they're not quite ready yet either this one is pretty good now how do i store them so i have baggies with names on them so this bag um is a bag of um, 
partially finished work so they need finishing so finishing to me is what I'm going to show you today just adding that last little bit that makes it ready to go into a journal these ones are ready to use and they're ready to use orange and then I also have pink and I have red so what I'm looking for is the predominant color uh, dictates what what goes in there so this is purple uh, blue and yellow and green so um, that's all I have at the moment so as you can see I store them once I think they're ready to go and then if I need something blue or green or purple I just go right to my tissue bags and pull them in and they all sit in a big um, 31 bag uh, in my craft room all nice and organized for use so um, that's kind of the direction I go with them the other thing I keep is tissues so whenever I do um, uh, decoupage like thing with um, paper napkins that have a, an image on them I throw the paper napkins in here the the white part that I pull off and just random tissue if I get some nice tissue from a gift and I'm not going to reuse it in another gift or if it's maybe too wrinkled up for another gift the tissue goes in here because tissue is a great thing to add to your junk journals and your pages too the other thing I do is I pet, I keep all my little bits and pieces. I know it's insane. So I have an example. I just did a page the other day and there was a little piece of something. And of course, I probably can't find it right now because it was so little. Yeah, so it was so little that uh, it's probably in the pile over there. But I literally keep little bits of tissue. Um, I'm trying not to put a hard card in here because this is going to be used for paper making. And uh, the harder the material, the more difficult it is to make paper. But you can imagine all these different textures and colors and things. I may separate them. I may not, depending on what I'm, I'm doing when I'm making the paper. But I, they go in a bag for paper making. So I, I have, been, have made paper recently, and I stopped collecting. Um, so now I'm back to collecting that again. So there's lots of things you can do with your cleanup products and um and, and and to make them useful like i don't know but that's that's enough in my mind this is an awful lot of ink to leave in the garbage and i i just feel like i i'm obligated to um oh and i use i should have mentioned i also keep um what do you call those things baby wipes because they get color in them too um, but it's a you know you pay a lot of money for your materials, so you want to be able to use them up. So the the process for these paper guys is they just sit in a paper clip, and whenever I need something to block an ink, I just pull out one of these things, and I just keep adding to them. You can see that um, I've pulled out... Oh, I forgot about that one. Um, I've pulled out um, painting ones here. And then I've got the spray ones in the back. The painting ones I'll use for spray and the spray ones I'll use for painting. So it's all good. Everything gets mixed up. This one I don't think was used at all. Oh, it's just something that'll get used. So, you know, uh, I try not to get a new sheet of paper if I remember or if I can find these at the time. Um, not to say that everything is a complete disaster and... Like, and uh, so I just keep um, adding to that pile and I keep it right at my desk so I can pull it out when I need it. The other thing I do is doodling. So um, when I'm bored and I just have uh, a little bit of time and I feel like doing something that's kind of mindless, I'll, do, I'll pick a shape and I'll do some doodles. This happens to be a teardrop shape. Um, and I just fill, fill it in with dots and stripes and whatever. And then these go sort of in the same pile as the um, spray and pink backgrounds because I'll actually work 
using this as a protection for whatever I'm spraying or whatever. Um, just because it, uh, it gives a whole different look than going in and coloring them with a, a pencil crayon or a, um, a marker or, or painting them. So um, I keep those as well in the pile of stuff for the um, what needs to go under or around paint when I'm spraying it. <clears throat> okay, so I am going to show you a little bit about how I'm going to jazz these guys up and finish these guys off. So this one actually I would probably put in my pile it needs a lot of work so it goes back into the sopping up pile and I may use it today to sop up what I'm working with. I don't mind a little white but th these guys are just a little too white and what I'm trying to do right now you know what I think he's gonna go in the finished pile because I like him the way he is. Let me turn off the overhead and you'll see how intense this color is. Oops too many lights going on there. Look how deep that color is if you look at the color of my hand. It's, I can't even give you that color on camera. If you were to see it in front of you, you'd go, wow, that's pretty intense. This, I'm a little more meh about, but this one definitely is ready to go. And I'm wondering if I can pull, oh, I can separate these and have two pieces. A little hard around there but let's see oh yep there we go and so I separate and then I have two pieces so this works out if I want to do a double page layout or, or something you want to make sure you get the right side but look at how much more I have of that now oh, that's awesome I think I need to keep that out and play with that um, all right this could use some jazz okay let me think this out first um, let's pull out some things that need, that are in the yellows. We're going to stay away from the blues and the purples. Let's go into the yellows. And that's more red than anything. So we've got two pieces here. Um, I'm going to pull him out. I've got three pieces here where now I can start building a little bit of texture and color. So a couple of things that I can do is get some mica stains. Um, so I'm thinking about some blue mica stain. I have some ready orange mica stain. Oh, I have some real orange mica stain. Okay, so I've got orange got blue, I've got red, and let's pull out some purple. There we go. We're going to just play with those. I, I, I can't make up my mind. All right, so I'm going to pull a sheet of the paper that I use for keeping the paint down. So I don't have to move around too much. And I am just going to decide which paints I'm going to add in um, to each of these. Actually, let's start with this guy. So this guy, I want to put some of this kind of goldy bronzy color. There we go. Got to get that clicker going. And with these guys, you want to do the, the side to side motion because you don't want to block up. I think I have enough yellow. Um, do I want an orange or no? I'm going to go for this pepperminty color. And I need to have some water. Oops. There we go, we're almost done. He's been sitting for a while. How's this one? Okay, so let's move 
those guys out of the way. All right, so now I'm literally oops, just going to take a spray and from a distance, I'm just going to let it splatter. Oop. Okay, so we have a little bit of that. And this one, I'm going to go a little closer. And now, I'm going to roll it up. Wipe it down and see what happens when it comes apart. Woo, that's quite a bit different. And it has the sparkly on it, which I really love. Okay, so I need to have something a tiny bit there. I think I'm going to push in some blue. Just a tiny bit of blue. Paper. Get some dots there. See the how the dots are going? Oh, that didn't work out quite so well. I'm going to have to wet that down because I don't want that to be a hard edge. And again, a hard edge. So we let that just play a little. And there we go. I think I'll pull that color out a little bit here. So there you go. Mostly random, but just finished up with a little bit of detail. And now this one is going to go dry. I don't want to touch it too much. It goes on the drying rack. And one of my unfinished paper towels is going to soak up that. Now when you soak up your mess, you want to have wrinkles and crinkles so that it doesn't all go in one blob. You want it to be crinkly and um, show some interest. Okay, now this has greens in it. Let me put my lids back on. We have greens and black and purple. I think I'm going to go in with a little more purple. And we're going to add some red to there. No. I think we're going to go orange. I'm feeling very Halloweenish and yellow. Let's try that. See what happens. This time, I'm actually going to wet down the paper towel. So I'm going to get it nice and damp. Get it to pick up all the water, and we're going to see what happens when we spray. Okay, the yellow is ready. There we go. And the purple. There we go. All right. So I'm going to add a little more to this corner. And I'm letting it just pop out like that. <coughs> and we'll put some orange in there. Oops. Oh, it's yellowy gold. And then some orange. Okay, and then I'm just going to open that up just a little bit more. And I like to roll it up. Spread it out. Whoops, I think it's coming right through. Okay. And then we get to play a little more. Alrighty. I think I need more purple. More water 
there so I don't have that straight edge. A little more water there so it spreads out. And I don't want to put any more yellow. So let's get some orange down in this corner. We're just going to leave that sprayed. And maybe a little bit of color up in that corner. There we go. Splay that a bit. Just a tiny bit. There we go. All right. This is kind of like using the uh, watercolors that come in powder form, you know. Same kind of idea. Clean up the mess. I don't worry about getting all the color off. But you see what I mean about pulling, pulling the color on a crinkly paper towel. It just makes it more interesting. We're just going to keep using that paper towel and this piece of paper. All right, now we're down to this one. This one is just yellow in my mind, but it has some blue in the back. So we're going to go to blue. Uh, we are going to have some purple. And we are going to have some red. I think that's the way I want to go here. And I'm going to do just a light spray on top. So there we go, a little bit of spray, just kind of all over-ish, but not too all over-ish. And that one I did harsh, and this one I did just squeaking it out. And now we're going to add some purple to that. I feel like I need to water that down just a bit more to minimize it. And then it's it's like it's like painting really. I'm gonna use the other side of the paper this time. Oops, I could get on my pants. All right, now that does need watering. That's pretty vibrant. This is looking like a tie-dye. So, all right, enough of the red, a little more of the blue. And some of this blue I want to spray out. Okay. Now, you can dry these if you want to dry them. I just let them dry on their own. Um, I have a couple of places that I dry. I have some racks from We Are... Uh, we Are Memory Keepers. And these are in a pack of four, so I've got two here. And um, they're meant for paper stacking, but the open holes are really great for drying rack. So paintings and uh, prints and things that I pull off from my jelly printing, I will use those racks to, um, to uh, dry off my work. So I have them spread out in twos, and I have one of those memory make, maker tray uh, carts. So they just all sit on the tray cart under my desk out of the way. All right. Now this is starting to pick up some color and some interest. It takes a while to get this stuff done. 
especially if you're just cleaning up with it and not intentionally going in and coloring. Now this one was the one that I thought was done, but I'm, I'm not thinking that it's done. This has a lot of the um, uh, oxide ink on it. So I think I'm going to bring in a tiny bit of non-oxide ink. And I think I'm liking this brownishness, so I'm going to try and pu pull in a little bit more using my <coughs> Crooked Broom um, mica stain. So, uh, dry paper or wet paper? You know what? I'm going to do one side wet. So I'm going to wet that paper down. And then the other side is going to be dry, and we're going to see what the difference is. Whoops. I need this guy. Well, instantly this sucks right into the paper and this is kind of whooshing and wooling. And let's just roll that around a little. And that just is sitting on the surface, which I don't mind actually. So we're going to do all wet here, all dry here. Uh, maybe a little bit more of the intense purple. Uh, so I'm going to do that whole side wet. Maybe splash a little more paper so it runs. A little more, sorry, water so that it runs, keeping this more dry. Yeah, I'm liking what's going on here. <laughs> Are there rules? Are there directions? How do you get this this done? Um, it's it's just playing, folks. Like I I can't even tell you. Um, what I'm thinking because I don't really know what I'm thinking until I'm actually doing it. I just want to try and take away some of that white paper. That's my goal. And uh, create something that is a little bit more interesting. I've got some orange happening there so I just want to put a tiny bit of orange in that corner. Oh, there we go. Maybe a tiny bit of orange in that corner, but I have to hit that with water. There we go. Now this one I'm going to dry just a bit because it's quite wet. Where's my paper towel here? A little too much happening there. All right. Yeah, in order for me to get this to a dry spot, I'm going to have to uh, dry that out just a little. And because all the wet's on that side, I'm going to hold it with the dry up, tapping it off to get as much of that wet, 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 wet off there as possible. Because otherwise the ink will just run right into my rack, and I don't want my rack to get really messy. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Whoa, look at the greens I'm getting. Very cool. Okay, this is dry enough that I can throw that to the side and look at all the sink. See, this is what I mean. Like, um, let's pull that right into a paper towel. Just lay it right on there. There's still some unwatered ink here, so I'm going to water it so it'll get absorbed in the paper towel. And there we go. And now we've added a little bit more in to this paper towel, too while we're waiting. Okay.
All right. So do you see how, how it just simply evolves? So now I'm going to, you know, sit and play with that for the rest of the day and get them all done and out drying so I can get them put away. But I want to show you what I use them for. And I have, um, I have a couple of journals. This one I've just started. And um, so I've got lots of things that are partially uh, working. I'm going to do a double page with the purple that I showed you earlier, but maybe he'll do it at the center of the book. There we go, because then it will lay nice and flat. And you remember these guys? These guys I want to put down. And I want them to be all wrinkly. So let me just move everything else out of the way. So I'm going to get my pot of collage medium because this is a big job. I also have little tubes of it, but they're too small. And I need a nice big brush, which I have right here. It just needs drying off. Okay. You always want to make sure that whatever you use to apply the collage medium, you've got it in water right afterwards because it does coat the bristles of your brush and it's really hard to get out so i think what i'm going to do i'm going to plop lots on my mat and dip into that i don't want to dip right into the container so let's take this off here And it dries quickly, so make sure you put your lid back on your pot. Okay, so now I'm just going to put a nice thick layer. You want to make sure you get it spread everywhere. And if I was painting or something, I'd worry about getting the collage medium on other pages because, you know, there's pages underneath here. But this is collage medium and it just goes matte. So I'm not concerned about... I like the sand best. So now I'm just going to put this down on top. And I'm just going to finger press it because I don't want it to necessarily lose some of the texturiness of it. So it's okay if it bubbles up in spots. Whereas if I'm putting a piece of flat paper down, I don't really want that look. Oops. Now, I will take the top off of that when it's dry. Right now, I'm going to switch sides and do the same process to the other side. And I'm probably going to need some more collage medium. I use a lot of collage medium. In fact, I think I'm just going to put it right on the, the plate. There we go, or on the book. And not waste. See how it's got color from the, uh, the yellow ink on it. That's why you don't go dipping back into the pot. All right. Get this all smooshed out. This is way more than I need, but it's okay because I'm going to put it on the other side, on the top. seal the surface of this because I don't want the ink to as I'm working on top I don't want the ink or the uh, whatever's on there to bleed 
through to my next layer. So I'm going to seal it. And which side do I like? I think I'm going to do this side. Again, I'm just doing that patting down business. I didn't cover the spine, which may be a regret, but I can always put something crossing the spine. Okay, so now I do want to put more of this on. Uh, I think I need to wipe that because it has some nasty color on it. There we go. And now I'm going to just dot across here. Close that up. Get this moved around. Whoops. Now I don't actually think I'm going to finish a page, but it'll give you an idea of how I will use them in my work. I am, uh, I like to call my journals junk art journals um, because they're not really junk, but they're not really um, like arty. <laughs> they're more collagey than anything else. Okay, that's good. Just clean up all the mess I have here. I find it is, uh, my process is a combination of two things. I like having print found objects, but I don't, I'm not really vintage. Um, that didn't touch, so I can put that back in. Good, good, good. And, um, but I do occasionally like grunge, or not occasionally, I actually quite like grunge, but I do like grungy bits of things. Like this is very grungy looking. Um, this kind of reminds me, and that's what you do with these paper towels. You kind of say to yourself, okay, what what is the imagery I'm seeing making me feel? Like what is it? What is it pretending to be or resembling? And I don't worry about smooshy. The reason I didn't dry it completely and then coat it is because I do want the paper towel to kind of smoosh and move around a little bit. So uh, I should probably address that. So when you're putting your collage pieces down, when you fix them to the page, if you're okay with things moving around and wrinkling then you can go right over top with your sealer but if you like it to be the way it is then you have to make sure you let it dry completely before you seal it because if you seal it while it's wet the pieces will move because they're still not dry underneath so that's an important thing to note um, when you're doing your work how, how do you want it to end up and I'm just getting all this out of my brush and I have a little bowl that I or a little jar that I keep to the side where I pop my brush and my stuff in just to keep it from getting um, hard and then I'll wash them after I'm finished working so now I'm gonna go in and dry this off uh, we've been about 40 minutes I, I'll do a little bit more I don't want to keep you too long. I know some of my videos can be really long. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this off. And I have a pair of scissors that are I've been using with metal, so the, the blades of them are all uh, ratty. And when I'm doing things that I want to be very grungy, I use the ratty edge scissors to cut because then I get like a ratty edge cut. 
it's not that obvious but um, it just kind of makes it look like it's not completely clean you can sort of see a little bit of rattiness there um, I have a bit of it overhanging at the bottom do I care about that I think I'm gonna leave that the other thing you can do is tear it off once it's very dry you can just pull away at it if you want a super ratty look I'll show you what that looks like so this is what happens when you tear maybe I'll lift it up so when you tear it off the paper towel that is um, you get that kind of ratty look to it and my my pen or my uh, scissors give a ratty look but it's a different kind of clean edge ratty look there we go oh I love that so now I have these two pieces and they are big enough to do something with so I am going to hang on to those in my finished work um, where's my purple so this one that says ready to use purple these guys are going to go back in there I likely will not add them to this page because there's enough of it and it's quite intense and uh, let's put the nice sides out so I can see there we go alrighty so that goes into my ready to use purple okay now put that away for a moment so now this is the part where I sort of uh, start to think to myself um, where might I be going with this page so uh, at this point I want to collect some things that I'm going to add to this page uh, this kind of reminds me of a, oh, I wish you could see the detail and the depth of the ink and what's going on in this area here it just it looks like there's all kinds of levels and then you have of course the texture of the paper towel too um, our paper towels don't have any pattern in it but it's all over texture and uh, it looks very cool now sometimes this will be as far as I'll go um, as you can see in other pages I've sort of uh, that's a finished page um, but I kind of you know went this far and then liked what I was seeing and then didn't these are gel this is a gel print um, this is a jelly print as well this one is a cut up jelly print um, so I, I tend to put things in and um, this is a gel print this is a collage and I just it, sometimes it takes time for me to think about where I'm going with this and uh, so it's hard to sort of oh, that's <laughs> I rubbed off my uh, roller for from jelly printing on the back of my uh, journal it's quite beautiful anyway um, so that is the actual process of what to do I, I mean this video isn't about this part it's about not throwing away your ink because look at how beautiful this piece is you would have to replicate this with more ink but why do that when you already have ink available in your paper towels and so I encourage everybody to be using their paper towels for collaging um, let's see what can I um, pull together very quickly oh I haven't used these these are squash coffee pods I just like the way that they look I don't think I'll use them on this project but look at that like they they oh Okay, maybe I will use them on this project. I have several different colors. Oh my gosh. I, I'm telling you, like, I, I am a garbage junkie. Look at those coffee pod tops. They are medallions of beauty. Uh, so I also have that. Oh no. I also have a lighter one. <laughs> Okay, my brain is now this is what happens my brain pops oh look at that orange that orange is quite something that turquoise is quite something I like that copper too gotta do threes 
Let me see what else I have in here. Oh, I have this, lighter copper. Do I like those colors together? Maybe I have that color. No, that's kind of boring. Oh, boring. No, boring. Or do I use two of the turquoise? Nope. I think those are the three I'm using. Sorry, folks, I just got onto a thing. I've had these in my drawer for about a year, and I have not kind of figured out what to do with them. And then popping, just like laying them on top here has made me crazy. Like, look at how fun this is. It's like balloons bouncing across the page or something. And then I have these like unpainted things. I like the unpainted things as well. But I also have leftover um, die cuts that didn't work out too well. Like there's just so many things to play with. Ooh, that's kind of cool. What if I did Stairway to Heaven? <laughs> You know, they're stark white. I might have to change the color of them. Um, and I have other things here, like I've got this window. <gasps> oh, I have a picture. Sorry, things are just popping in my head. This is how my creativity works. I just start playing with what is there and then things pop into my head like I have this photo that I was playing with yesterday um, which is a rain shot ah. and I can't find it right now you know what I'm totally gonna use that photo not in this frame but um, and then I have things like this where I can color and distress like this is white at the moment but it doesn't have to remain white so there's all these kinds of things that you just pull out of your junk drawer and you know the old Tim Holtz um, uh, what do you call that film strip like there's just so many things to to use and what else do I have and I have butterflies and I have hearts and I have Oh, and I also have these, but this is, I think this is enough. That's just going to make it look shattered more. It's crazy the things I can dig out of here. Or I can go upscale, and I have some of this, which is gold. Yeah, I'm not feeling that. So anyway, back to the project. There are a million things you can use. Like I have all kinds of these sort of um, cardboard or chipboard things that can be used as is or colored. Oops, I just ran over my thing here. I can't pick it up right now, but I'll grab it later. You know, so there's all kinds of ways to go. You know, pre-made things, things you make yourself. I'm, I like the black on that. Ooh, some of those bits and pieces will definitely work in there. Not so much this. I'd have to color it. I might use some of that. And... I have gates. Yeah, that's too country. Um, I'm liking the gates, maybe, or what? Where was that other thing that I had? Um, is it here? Or maybe that. No, I think I like the gates. It's more goth looking. 
So I'm thinking of combining some of these things together and I have this perfect photo that will go on this project. Um, so <clears throat> at this point, you're not going to see the finished project because it would just take way too long for me to pull that together for the video. So I've been doing some thinking. As you can see, I'm kind of laying some things out. This is the picture I was talking about. Um, I feel that this is another video. So I am going to leave this week's video at this. And if you want to see how this all turns out, join me next week and we will actually put this two page spread together and I'll show you all the ways that I did it. Okay. So having said that, thank you very much for showing uh, up today and joining me with Scrap Your Scraps, which the focus was how to use up the ink that's on your plate and all those beautiful inked up paper towels and how to organize them. And we kind of got off topic, but uh, hopefully you will join me next week. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to share it with friends, please feel free to do so. And um, don't forget to like and, and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel below this video. So hopefully I will see you next week. Bye.